What you get is you get a Synchra 1.5 uh, regular pump, and when you open that pump, it's just the standard stuff that you get in the pump. I just took off the front. There, I just accidentally took off the front. But uh, the standard one 1.5, and then there's usually a bag of stuff. And then when you open up the PS200, one of the bags is this bag. Um, and inside this bag, you will see the needle wheel uh, or pinwheel for the pump. So obviously when you're doing this new needle wheel pump, you're going to need to switch out the impeller. So to switch out the impeller, it's pretty simple. You just take off the front and you're going to take off this part that actually is 1.5 is adjustable. Um, and you're going to take off this part here and then take off this. Um, this one's a, a steel um, shaft, uh, so and then there's a small space, a rubber spacer in there that you're going to remove, and put this, and then inside here is the impeller, and then you're going to take this one here, and it has the same uh, rubber spacer. So since mine was stuck in there, I guess it could happen to you too. I'm just going to remove that one, put this one in here. And this one's ceramic, um, this, this shaft is, so be a lot more careful with this one. The steel one is a little more durable, the ceramic one um, can break. So this is going to slide in and it's going to want to snap in because it's magnetic. And you're going to feel it push into that back piece, put it in here. There's little tabs that line up to the little tabs or little cutouts right there in the case. So it goes in here, make sure you're lined up there and then it's in here so the other piece and this is what it's going to draw in the air so the needle wheel can chop it is this piece right here and then in that same bag you get a some it looks like about I don't know 3 8 inch tubing silicone airline tubing you're going to put this on this here and really you can just snap it into here. So this side here, you're going to snap it into here. But what me and another customer just noticed that if you turn this like this, you can actually take this off. So there's a real easy way to, to fix this. And this is kind of the important part here is this little, normally this is used when you have the impeller as a plus and minus to adjust the flow. So as you turn it, it closes down flow or up, up flow. But if you turn it like this, you can actually pop this guy out just with your your finger there and then this comes out and so then I'm gonna this will you can screw it on and see. it's gonna lock in place so now it locks in place so now I can put this in and use one of these cutouts here to direct my airline and then push it in a little bit and now it's set and now it can't come Kate can't come off. This is going to come off here. The next part is to keep the airline or from the air coming in or away from salt creep. So what you have here is you have a cap here and you see this just a little angle cut. So you have an intake and what it pulls in from the air in. And so if this, this eventually will get some salt in it, you can just rinse this out. Put this right here. Take your airline, put it on this. There's a little holder here. Looks like a figure eight. And there's gonna be a T and a wedge cut pipe. Sometimes I say this to customers and when I say wedge pipe, I don't explain it very well, but the wedge pipe, all it is, is it's cut at an angle, and as you turn it, it either increases or decreases out uh, the outlet pressure, or outlet flow, I guess you can put. So it just slides in here, and you can it's impossible to see from here, but as you turn this, it cuts it off or opens it up. And the red tab, all it is is for a point of reference. So this is wide open. If it's pointed back here, this would be all the way closed. And so 
you don't need the tab, but I use it for a good point of reference. And sometimes I, I'm on other skimmers, I've actually marked it with a marker here. So, you know, when I go, okay, this is the perfect level, so I mark it here and go, okay, that's where I can go right back to after a good cleaning or whatever. You put this figure eight on this, put it down here, and then this cap is just, this is just going to sit right there. And then this is going to go on your body of your skimmer here. So that's how that goes. I'm going to take it off right now. Put it down to the side. There's one more, there's one more bag within that larger bag. It has the small feet, um, little rubber, rubber feet that go on the bottom. There's four of them. Go on the bottom here. Um, you can use these to keep the uh, pump from chattering on the bottom of the sump. And there's this piece. This is important. So this piece right here, this is what I misplaced. It's got a little O-ring and it's gray and it just screws on here um, instead of the package of um, connecting parts that you won't use if you're using them with our skimmer. Alright, now we'll take out the rest of the skimmer. So, here's the uh, skimmer cup. Pretty standard Elos. Um, got it etched in. Elos logo, if you can see it somehow. Oh, but you can see. And here's the O ring. All nice and machined, nice and thick. And this is another one that people ask questions about. Why is there a hole here? The hole is for you to, some people want to put a separate container to add more, or to catch skimmate when they go on vacation or whatnot. We don't offer a, a separate container. It's easy, something easy to make. Um, but I, it's also good for a safety. So if you do have an overflow for whatever reason, if you have this hole left open and you're using an LO sump, it's just going to drop back into the sump. Um, until you have a chance to fix whatever made the skimmer go nuts. Um, with this hold closed, what will happen is it will pop off the lid and it could spray the bottom of the cabinet or I guess the top of the cabinet, the underside of the top of the cabinet. Um, so I recommend keeping it open and most of the time I don't use the lid on the Elo sump because if it drops in and it hits the sump lid, um, most of it's going to get in the sump but some could get out of the sump. There's a little ridge built in for that, so it's probably okay. Also include this little silicone stopper if you don't want to use it at all, and you're okay with it might pop off or you know it's not going to have a pretty stable system and a stable skimmer and you're not worried about it, then go ahead and use this. Or when you go to clean it, you can put the silicone stopper in there and do that. So the next one is, if I can get the packaging off. Damn. Okay. Is the skimmer body. If I can... This is the skimmer body. Um, you can see a little bubble plate in there. Um, and this is what kind of makes it unique to the yellow um, sump. Is actually the outlet is up high. A lot of uh, needle wheel skimmer, or most needle wheel skimmers, they have the outlet down low. And in the uh, yellow sump, you have those variable velocity chambers that are actually up higher. So what this will do is drop down into the sump and you don't have to use PVC or kind of fabricate a way to get it over our standard uh, media chain. All you're doing here is taking this pump and it's going to press in with an o-ring that's already built in there. The pump is underneath the skimmer body. Uh, makes it a little taller than the NS100 um, but a lot smaller footprint. So here's the outlet and the wedge pipe. This installs on here over the two O-rings. It's over two. I usually like to lubricate them with silicone grease before I do that, but no problem. Um, then I put this here. And then the skimmer cup is going to go right here. And I'm assuming that you can't see this. And this, again, I would like to silicone grease this, but no big deal. So there it is. Uh, and I'll try to raise it up a little bit. So you can see the PS200 skimmer with the pump in it. Um, and I think that's about it.